Ah, it is a good day today because we are going to be turning wrenches on old sea bass. Because sea bass is getting a new engine! Yes! Finally! Now, you may be confused as to where the hell I am. This is my home garage. Um, I have recently moved to Utah to work on the racing side of things for Hoonigan, so working over at Hoonigan Racing Division in Park City. Right, six, uh, seven, Jesus Christ, uh, geez, oh my God. <laughs> that's why you haven't been seeing me at the Donut Garage building the donk or anything else that's rad. You start the good shit when I leave? Come on, guys. Anyway, here's what we're doing today. We're gonna be swapping that old 454 out and replacing it with a 572 cubic inch big block from our friends at Smetting Performance. This bad boy's packing all the goodies. The foundation is a dark big M engine block. It's got a forged crank, rods, and pistons. It's got a custom ground hydraulic roller cam and valve train from Comp Cams. Topped off with AFR 335 heads and fuel is delivered by a Holly Super Sniper EFI system. So I'm tearing this jalopy down and getting the 454 out of it. Let's cut to our buddy Jacob over at Smetting in Texas. He's gonna show you how this motor goes from bare block all the way through the machining process and the build process to the point where it's making horsepower. Hey there, how's it going? Jacob here with Smetting Performance in Texas. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through the entire build process for Zach's 572 big block. Starting with the foundation for this build, we're gonna use this Dart Big M engine block. In order to get 572 inches out of a 9.8 deck big block, we take the bore to 4.630 and then stroke it to 4.250. Part of what makes this block so nice is that it's Siamese cast, and that means that there's no water in between the cylinders. It's solid cast iron, and that allows us to safely go to this massive 4.630 bore, and even at that bore size, we still have almost 300 thou of wall thickness. One of the other features that makes this block so strong is that the center three main caps, which are the most stressed in a conventional five cap V8, have splayed bolts, meaning the bolt comes off at an angle instead of being parallel like the front and the rear cap. Whenever the engine block is really working under a lot of torque and cylinder pressure and the crankshaft is getting pushed and everything's being pulled, these splayed bolts really help hold everything together and make this block so strong. Even at the power level we're going to make with this engine, it's not even stressed. We are allowed to run tighter bearing clearances than you normally would on a block that is going to be stressed and is warping around. Because we have tighter bearing clearances, we have less oil sloshing through the crankcase, which is parasitic and can cause windage issues. And a lot of it can come up on the rings and you have an engine that has a high oil consumption. Something else that makes this engine block so efficient is it has a priority main three galley oiling. This means oil comes through the main cap from the pump, through the cap, through the block, through the filter, back into the engine block, and then it travels down this galley and comes up to the crankshaft and the mains. It is also split to these galleys, which handle the oil for each side of the engine. So because the crank and rods have their own oil galley, they are provided much more oil flow and control than normal. Another key feature of Dart's improvement on the oiling system is they move the lifter crossover from the rear to the front. When you have it in the rear, the oil comes up and then travels to the front to lubricate the lifters, rocker arms, and valve train. Problem with that is this is where the distributor goes in a big block Chevy. It intersects that lifter galley and oil can bleed through the distributor housing before it even comes to these lifters. So by Dart moving it to the front, the oil comes up and then travels rearward so all the lifters get their primary oiling first and then it comes to the distributor where it can lubricate the gear. This engine was honed with a torque plate and the torque plate simulates the cylinder head being bolted to the engine and the stress caused by all these bolts being tightened. Whenever the bolts are tightened, especially on a big block, because as you can see, some of them are really close to the cylinder, the bore actually is going to distort in certain places. It might pinch in, it might pull apart. It's all different. So we put a torque plate on here which simulates the stress of the cylinder head, and then we can hone the bores perfectly straight. When the cylinder head gets finally installed, that re-simulates the stress, 
and our bore is perfectly straight. I also finish the hone with a plateau brush, which helps make the bore even slicker, which really helps the ring seal. With the engine block wrapped up, let's head over to the balancer and start working on the crankshaft. This is a one piece rear main seal crank with a 4.25 inch stroke that coupled with our 4.630 bore is going to give us 572 cubic inches in a traditional short deck big block Chevy. These are the crankshaft counterweights. And when we balance the crankshaft, we're going to drill holes in the counterweights to make them weigh the same as our calculated bob weight. And so the bob weight, which is basically all the moving reciprocating parts inside of the engine, comes out to 2,277 grams, over two kilos, which is a lot of weight. However, our machinery is so precise, we can balance that to within one gram. Gotten it down to under eight grams in the front and under 10 in the back. The locations are still looking good. My goal is to get it under one gram front and back. Boom. Crankshaft is balanced under a gram front and back. Next, I'm going to deburr the edges of these holes just a little bit so we don't cut ourselves on them. We'll get the crank cleaned up, polished, and it will be ready for assembly. Pretty much everything is now off the block and this thing can come out. Pretty simple stuff. I mean, honestly, this took a couple hours last night. It was a uh, probably a four beer job doing it at a casual pace. So what we're gonna do is now we're gonna trailer this thing to Hoonigan Racing Division and then we'll pull this engine out with the forklift, put the new engine in and then start this party. Today, I'm gonna to go over all of the components that we're going to use in this engine, as well as actually assemble it all into the dark engine block. That's a four finger port right there. And this thing is just gonna be absolutely wicked. Can't wait to hear it on the dyno. 